Welcome back to the lab. I would totally love to have your support. So please hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any new content. All right, let's start with some external structures of the eye. First, we have the eyelids, which are called palpebrae. We have a superior palpebra, which is the uh, upper eyelid, and then the lower eyelid would be the inferior palpebra. Then we have the lacrimal gland, which is part of the lacrimal apparatus. And this is a really important structure because it helps produce uh, tears and fluid and one of those things in the fluid is a really important antibacterial enzyme called lysozyme so when that's secreted and it washes over the surface of our eye it helps protect and lubricate the lacrimal gland I will note is on the lateral side of the eye then medially here we have these two passageways these are called canaliculi or canaliculus singular. So this is the superior canaliculus and this is the inferior canaliculus. These two structures right here are technically called puncta. Um, we have a superior and, and an inferior and those will drain into the canaliculi. So the canaliculi are just these parts right here. And then those will connect into this structure called the lacrimal sac. So quick question here, if the lacrimal gland is lateral, then that means the lacrimal sac is medial. Lateral, medial, we're looking at the anterior portion of the eye. So which eye do we have here? Hopefully you said the left eye. Let's now talk about the rectus muscles, which are the muscles that are going to help control the eye movement. We have four that are situated in this compass-like fashion, north, south, east, west. And those names share the, their location on the eye, which is really nice. So we think, okay, this is the superior portion of the eye, therefore that is the superior rectus muscle. This is the inferior portion of the eye, so therefore that is the inferior rectus muscle. This would be the lateral rectus muscle. And then this over here would be the medial rectus muscle. So how do we know if that this is lateral and this is medial? Our oblique muscles tell us that. Here we have the superior oblique muscle and the inferior oblique muscle runs this way. And a memory trick I like to give students is that those oblique muscles are at an angle and then they will run medially. So if we were to just follow this along, we know that they're going towards the medial part of the body. So therefore, this way is medial. That is the medial rectus muscle, which means this has to be the lateral rectus muscle. On this superior portion right here, this one looks a little bit different than this one right here. There is a, a piece of tissue called uh, the common tendinous ring, which, which is what all these attach to, and the superior rectus muscle actually comes like this and then loops around a little structure called the trochlea and runs back that way, which is why this looks a little bit different, but we are seeing a portion of that muscle. These uh, muscles are innerva innervated by cranial nerves that um, we looked at in the previous week. So the superior rectus the inferior rectus, the medial rectus, and the um, uh, inferior oblique, those are all innervated by cranial nerve three, which is that oculomotor nerve. And then uh, the superior oblique muscle is innervated by cranial nerve four, which is the trochlear nerve. And then this lateral rectus muscle right here is innervated by cranial nerve six, which is the abducens uh, nerve. The eye is made up of three layers called tunics. And those tunics are called the fibrous tunic, the vascular tunic, and the nervous tunic. So let's start with the fibrous tunic. The fibrous tunic is made up of the sclera and the cornea. 
The sclera is commonly known as the white of the eye, and it's made up of a dense, irregular connective tissue, and it's avascular. Um, when we think form follows function, this is important because we want a tough uh, connective tissue to keep the shape of the eyeball. When we look at the cornea, the cornea is just this clear portion right here. Here on the surface of the sclera, which is the white of the eye, is a transparent tissue called the conjunctiva. It is made up of a specialized columnar epithelium. It contains uh, goblet cells that will secrete mucin um, that helps lubricate the eye. But then it also contains blood vessels, and those blood vessels will deliver oxygen and nutrients to the avascular sclera. So that's how that part of the fibrous tunic gets its nutrients. In addition to that, it will also contain nerve endings, and those nerve endings are what get stimulated whenever something gets into our eyes. The next tunic is the vascular tunic, which is made up of the choroid, the ciliary body, and the iris. The choroid is going to contain many blood vessels that will help uh, deliver oxygen and nutrients to the inner layer called the retina, which we'll look at here in just a little bit. But then it also has this really dark color, and that dark color comes from melanocytes, which produce melanin, and what that melanin does is it can absorb extra light that comes into the eye and help prevent it from scattering. Next, we have the ciliary body, which is made up of two parts. We have this uh, ciliary muscle right here, and then the suspensory ligaments, which are these little squiggles on this model. The ciliary muscle is composed of a ring of smooth muscles that are attached to the suspensory ligaments. Those suspensory ligaments are attached to this structure here called the lens. And that's really important to think about when we're looking at how we focus on images. So let's think about this. This is a circular muscle. So if a circular muscle relaxes, what is it going to do? It will open up. When that muscle opens up, it's pulling on the suspensory ligaments. When it opens up, relaxes, it will pull on the suspensory ligaments, and what that does is that flattens the lens. That's what happens when we are looking at things at a distance. Likewise, when we need to focus on something very closely, this muscle will contract. What does a circular muscle do when it contracts? It goes like this. So when that muscle starts to contract, what will that do to these suspensory ligaments? Those are going to loosen up or there will be less tension. And then this lens will have a more spherical shape. And that's what our eyes do when we are looking at things close up. And that whole process, which is controlled by the autonomic nervous system, is called accommodation. And then lastly, for the vascular tunic, we have the iris, which is known as the colored portion of your eye. And the colored part comes from the melanocytes that are in here. And then we also have this opening called the pupil. And the pupil can change sizes depending on what the muscles of the iris are doing. Um, on the inner portion right here, we have a circular arrangement of fibers and that muscle is called the sphincter pupilli. Remember when we have a sphincter or a circular muscle, whenever it contracts, it is going to go like this. And so when that sphincter pupilli contracts, it will constrict or make the pupil become smaller. Then on the outer portion right here, we have the dilator pupilli. And the, those fibers are in a um, kind of like spokes on a wheel. They kind of go outwards like that. So when those fibers contract, what it will do is it will open the pupil or dilate the pupil. And then finally, we have the neural tunic or nervous tunic, and that is made up of the retina, which is all of this right here. 
Um, so technically we have two portions of the retina. The difference between the two is that we have this photosensitive area, um, which is this lightish color right here. And then this portion right here is the non photosensitive area. Um, and that is kind of marked by this border called the aura serrata. Remember this inner portion right here is the ciliary body. Okay, so ciliary body, this portion is the non photosensitive part of the retina. And then all of this is the photosensitive part of the retina, but you could just call this area altogether the retina. A couple of really important structures here at the posterior part of the eye. Here on the inner portion right here is called the optic disc. And because we've cut the eye in half transversely, we're just seeing the bottom portion, the inferior half. Um, but the optic disc is where we're going to have axons um, for the cells that are eventually going to come together to form the optic nerve. And we looked at the optic nerve last week um, when we were studying the brain. Um, but the important thing to know about that optic disc is, be, is that we have no photoreceptors right here. And so when light gets refracted onto this spot right here, we actually can't see anything. So the optic disc is commonly referred to as the blind spot. And then just lateral to that, we have this uh, small area called the macula lutea, which is um, represented by this pink color, which kind of cracks me up because luteal actually means yellow. Uh, so I'm kind of like, I don't know, why didn't they use yellow here? But whatever, I didn't make the model. It's pink on this model. Um, but the more important thing I want you to know is that in the middle of it, so that would be this dark spot right there, is a um, depressed portion called the fovea centralis. So I kind of think central, centralis, center, it's right in the center of this macula lutea. And that fovea centralis contains the highest proportion of cones. Now cones are those photoreceptors that are responsible for our sharp acuity vision. And so whenever we really need to focus on something, like when we're reading, um, the light will get refracted onto this spot specifically so that we can see those nice crisp details. The last thing I wanna talk about are the different chambers of the eye and the liquid or humor that's inside of them. We have two different kinds of humor. We have an aqueous humor, which is very watery, and then we have a vitreous humor, which is uh, more viscous or thick. So let's start with our anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is made up of the area between the cornea and the iris. Remember, the iris is the colored portion of the eye. So this area right here is your anterior chamber, and it is filled with aqueous humor. Then the area between the iris and the lens, so it's this little sliver right here, that is the posterior chamber, and it is also filled with aqueous humor. You can think of the iris as kind of being the divider between the anterior and posterior chambers. And that aqueous humor, which is actually produced by the ciliary processes here, is going to constantly circulate and uh, deliver oxygen and nutrients to the lens and the cornea. And then lastly, from the lens and posteriorly, we have the vitreous chamber, which is filled with vitreous humor. That thick jelly-like liquid is going to help support the retina and keep the shape of the eyeball. So there you have it. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, and I will see you next time.